This Weekend Post using a black and white effects to make colors pop in your image. Sounds counterintuitive? Well, keep watching, I'll explain. Hi everyone, my name is Scott Davenport and welcome to InPost. Uh, thanks for spending a few minutes of your photographic day with me. And if this is the first time that you've seen one of my videos, real quick about what this show is all about. Uh, this is the, the second half of uh, a, a series, In the Field and in Post, And so it takes you through one of my photo outings. Everything from what went on in the field to what images I took away to how I post processed them. And you know, thoughts and tips all in between there. So this week, talking about black and white, and not in the traditional sense of making a black and white image, but using a black and white effect to make the colors pop in your images. And it has to do with blending modes. And it's a very easy technique. It's, it's not involved at all. All you need is a software that has layering and offers blending modes. So that could be Photoshop, of course, on one layers. Uh, you can probably even do this in something like, you know, Mac Fun, uh, in Intensify, I think they have uh, layering built in. And um, well, it's probably simplest if I just show you how it works. And uh, it's been something I've been experimenting with for a few months. And it's really uh, added an extra tool in my toolbox to make you know, some images pop. So let's dive into Lightroom, do some basic adjustments, and then we'll get into on one. And I'll show you how this, this blending mode in black and white can work together. All right, here in Lightroom. So I've done a little bit of work on this photo in Lightroom. Let's do a quick review. Uh, lens corrections is something I always do. As you can see before, I was shooting pretty wide, 24 millimeters. So it's bowed out. Lens corrections tidy that up nicely. Uh, there are some distractions in this photo. So I did some cloning and healing. So I'll turn that off. You'll see a spot here, this little spot on the sand here. Um, there are some other things too, this twig on the side. Uh, I'm debating whether or not to remove this and uh, this uh, tree kind of infringing on the right-hand side. You know, there's some other contrails in the sky. Uh, those annoy me, but the uh, tools that uh, On One has for retouching, I prefer over Lightroom. They give me more control. So some of those things I remand to doing in layers. I did take care of the simple spots. This guy here, this guy here, and uh, there was something else up in the sky here too. So the rest I'll take care of in layers. And then uh, the basic panel. So kept white balance is shot and popped the exposure up a little bit. This was a little underexposed. Added contrast and did my normal song and dance with adjusting white point, black point, highlights and shadows. Uh, if you've seen other videos, you'll know how I approach this really quickly. Uh, I tend to do contrast first and uh, I've got a, a whole video on using the black and white mode to check that out. Then I'll adjust the whites using the Option key or the Alt key on a Mac. And so when you do Option or Alt, you get something like this. And as you raise past the point where you're blowing out the highlights, you get like, this little heat map here. And so I'll back that off till just the point just before those are showing up. Do the same thing with blacks. And then either rein in the highlights, open up the shadows, depending on what the photo needs. For this one too, um, I do want some texture in this photo, but I really only want it for the tree, for the foreground, and uh, you know maybe some in the background. So I, I did a little touch on clarity, but I'm not gonna go overboard with that. I'll do that in stylization when I get into effects. So this is it for Lightroom. I'm gonna bring this over into On One, do some cleanup on these edge pieces I talked about, and then do some stylization. So here in On One in layers, I've done the cleanup. So uh, cleaned up the little twigs at the edge. I did decide to get rid of that little bit of scrub. It wasn't adding to the photo. Uh, a few other dots here and there. Uh, cleaned up the annoying contrail, whatever that was in the sky. And uh, the mountains, that, that took a little more work, a little reconstructive surgery on the mountains there. Uh, combination of the eraser and uh, the cloning tool. I did little to nothing with the retouch brush for this one. I've got a video course all about retouching, removing distractions from your photos. Check that out if you want to see the, the, the full end-to-end -end way that I do retouching and, you know, in some cases, reconstruction on photos. But now let's bring this into effects. Uh, I really want to add some pop to this, this tree and this foreground. And, uh, well, let me get in there. There's a, a pretty cool uh, trick we can do to help with this one. Okay, so here we are in effects, and you can see the final 
image and certainly the, uh, the foreground is popping a whole lot more. Let me start with the color enhancer. So color enhancer, uh, the sky is a little dull before the color enhancer. If I turn it off, you can see the blues are just washed out. And there was some more blue in there. I wanted to bring that up. So the color enhancer is there. It's only affecting the sky. Control M, you can see the mask. Now this is a very elaborate mask, really easy to create. Quick mask, drag it through the sky. Refine mask, where's fine brush? There it is, refine brush, paint over this portion of the tree. And that took care of removing the effect from the sky. Command or Control I to invert the mask, and we have the mask you see there. So I'm only applying these blues to the background sky. If it took 60 seconds, that was a long time. Um, it, was, it was very easy to do. And you can see I just bumped up vibrance, bumped up saturation in the blues to get these blue tones here and here. Why didn't I do it on the whole image? It was bringing blues up in the mountains too much, and it just looked funny. So, next, dynamic contrast. Click on that. And again, I'm using the, the opposite effective mask here. So if I do Control M, now I'm removing contrast from the sky. I don't want that to become more detailed. I want the tree, the mountain range, and the foreground to become more detailed. So I copied the mask from the color enhancer, pasted it on dynamic contrast, and used the natural setting. Nothing else straight out of the box with that. Now more color. Now this is a, a little bit of a different take. So this is kind of bringing up the warmth and the yellows of this tree. I wanted the tree to stand out just a little more from the background mountain range here. So did my uh, temperature adjustment to warm things up. You can see that mask again. So I'll do control M one more time. That same mask is coming in and again and again. I don't want to warm up the sky, just the foreground. And uh, with the yellows, just you know a tiny touch on the saturation, but move them a little more toward the orange range. So you know, matching and you know, kind of playing with that warmth, uh, just nudging these toward the oranges, so this tree becomes a little more pronounced. Now here's where uh, the, really the kind of the the whole point of this video. Why did I choose this image? I click on the black and white filter. Now obviously, this is not a black and white photo, uh, but what? happened here. Why, you know, things really pop. I mean, look at this. Here's before and here's after with that black and white filter. You know, what happened? I mean, this foreground became much richer. The tree is standing out more. You know, even the sky is getting crisper, too. Uh, first, you know, did some various adjustments on the color response and predominantly just lowered the blues so I wasn't killing the blues too much. Everything else in this is Tweaks, you know, just to taste details where we're getting this, this pop here. But, you know, but why is this not a black and white photo now? Well, let's scroll back up here. The answer is in the blending modes. So here I'm going to open this up. And you can see the blending mode is luminosity. Now when you use a black and white photo for um, luminosity, it just has a, a wonderful effect of you know, popping all the colors. So here's normal. So this is what... I used to fine-tune the black and white image. Now you are seeing a little bit of the blues show through in the sky. That's because of a mask that I have applied where I'm not applying full strength. That was something I did after fine-tuning the black and white. But you know, here the tree is standing out much more. Uh, you know, the, the the trunk of the tree, the brain, the main branch of the tree are darker and they're they're just more prominent. Now when you switch that to a luminosity mask, or sorry, luminosity blending mode you get this just wonderful pop as a result. Um, I did tone that down on the sky. If I do Control M, you're going to see there's that same mask again. You know, this, this uh, quick mask I did before, but uh, at a lower strength, so I grabbed the masking brush and painted away some of this at, um, I want to say, a 30 to 40% strength just to, uh, to, to take the edge off the sky so it didn't become... Uh, too much of a pop and too much of a distraction from the tree. But that is a really neat trick with the black and white mode. Get your photo looking like you want it to look black and white, then change to a luminosity blending mode. Get a really nice pop in color. Last but not least, vignette. Uh, you know, standard fare for my photos. Add the vignette. And I think for this one I might have gone off center a little bit. Let me lower the feather. Yes. So use the crosshairs to center 
the vignette on the tree itself, and then adjusted all these various sliders you know, to my liking for this photo. So at the end of it all, there's the before coming out of Lightroom, and there's the after. So the tip of the week is that black and white is for more than just black and white. If you've got software that does layering and offers you the ability to change blending modes, look at the luminosity mode after you've applied a black and white layer. And um, what's nice about the technique is it's very simple to do. And when you're adjusting the black and white layer, it's kind of easy to see what's going on. There's fewer tones for your eye and brain to process. You can see your contrast better. You can see your clarity better. And then when you change that blending mode, it changes how uh, your black and white rendition interacts with your color rendition. And you get some really nice, strong, um, in a good way, strong effects. You know, it's not over the top. It's not um, too crunchy or too um, HDR-y. Uh, it just you know, adds a really nice level of pop to your images. And that is it for this week in post. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, likes, shares, plus ones, tweets, all those social media outlets. Every time I see um, one of these videos getting shared or getting commented on, that really you know, feeds and energizes me so I can come back again and do another video next week and so on and so on. And if you've got questions, love to hear from you. You can contact me directly through my website. And uh, I usually turn around to answers within 48 hours. And I try to make the answer meaningful, not just a, yeah, me too, or, oh, that's a cool idea type responses. You know, I, I do think about it and uh, I want to think about it because your questions help me think about my photography and get better. And hopefully my answers help you get better with your photography. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.